I'm sorry, I just realized that you're wearing a shirt that has teeth on it. Oh, did you see the back? No. It says clown cheese. <laughs> <laughs> my coworker gave it to me for my birthday because oh, I'm constantly calling good. people clown shoes at work. <laughs> <laughs> it's very good. Thank you. Known. Don't like, don't listen. My name is Cass. And my name is Tease. Tease. Cass. Once more, you have trapped yourself in a prison of your own making. Uh, once more, you have trapped yourself into a snafu. <laughs> so you got to make the announcement that you goofed on Slenderman. <laughs> okay. In my defense, <laughs> I told you beforehand and you, number one fan, did not pick up on it. I um, am not a number one fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So in last week's episode, I thought that Eric Knudsen and Frederick Knudsen were the same person. They're not. Frederick Knudsen is the creator of Down the Rabbit Hole and not the creator of Slenderman. That's Eric Knudsen. So I apologize for any confusion. You know, I, I accepted it. I didn't use critical thinking until I was uploading it onto YouTube. And I was like, wait a second, Cass. Anyway, Cass, have you consumed any uh, fun little media this uh, past week? Yes. Uh, my favorite band, The Amazing Devil, came out with a new album. So I've been listening to that on repeat, and it's wonderful. Yeah. You can check it out over at Bandcamp. I'll probably talk about that on the coming episode of Show and Tell. So I won't talk about it too much here. And um, I've been playing Pikmin Bloom, by which I mean I've been going outside on walks and harvesting Pikmin when I do it. So That's delightful. I love a fun little way to gamify my life because I have a hard time doing things for myself sometimes. So that's that's my corner. Were you anything for Halloween? Working. What the heck? You couldn't work in your Halloween costume? Uh, no, my Halloween costume was working. So uh, oh, <laughs> I was boo. just, you know, doing work boo. all night. I didn't really, I didn't really do anything Aww. for Halloween. It's okay. Yeah. It's what okay. about you? Uh, I saw a little movie you yeah. may have heard of called Dune. Yeah. Where's my <laughs> yeah. spice? I saw Dune finally. I went to go see it in the theater with my mom. And I made my mom, my mom's become a Dune guy. So two Dune guys go in to see Dune together. That was really fun. We were the only two people in the theater until like five minutes in. Mm-hmm. And then a parent and child walked in. And I was like, damn, all right, I what guess. What an odd choice. I know, but was my mom and I not a parent and child? So, like, I can't really argue Oh, when you say parent and child, I assume, like, a child who's, like, eight or nine years old. Ah, I I want to say maybe, like, 15, 16, Mm, I'd say. mm. But anyway, saw Dune. It was actually uh, pretty good. Mm -hmm. And I finished Lula Rich, so Mm -hmm. that was fun. And I approximately watched 30 seconds of Spiral during a Halloween party on Saturday. <laughs> but that's it. And before you ask, I, for Halloween, was Colin Robinson from What We Do in the Shadows. Yeah, no no spoilers on that season finale, but very good not. stuff. Very good stuff. I will stuff. not. But, oh my God, I got my friend dressed up as Laszlo, and I made them wear a party hat so (laughs) i had a great time but that's it that's all i have to really report are you collecting more vix there on your fingers for your nose uh no there's a little bit of goop on it so i was just cleaning off the goop but i will rub some more vix on my nose at some point Mm -hmm. later it'd be like that it's that season it sure is my sinuses are screaming anyway Cass, do you have any opinions on one direction whatsoever not I have opinions on Harry Styles, but not really opinions on One Direction, to be totally honest with you. Okay. I was a fair. little too old when One Direction sort of boomed into popularity, so it wasn't mm-hmm. something I was like interested in. I was yeah. never really big into pop boy bands. No shade on anyone who was. Um And all my stuff on Harry Styles is like, oh my god, just let the man dress however the fuck he wants and stop, (laughs) like, trying to analyze his gender. Stop gatekeeping gender exploration. Oh, you're gonna love this episode, then. Oh, no. 
So I guess to just introduce other people to my experience on One Direction. I also want to say, first of all, that this episode is going to be a mess. The people who were involved were a mess. And this video, this episode, like researching for it, physically made me watch One Direction music videos because I realized I virtually know nothing about One Direction besides like the handful of mm -hmm. songs I do know and like the surrounding memes from Tumblr 2012 era. Mm. So I kind of. I didn't do a deep dive, but I just tried to familiarize myself with the boys. I think so the one say. thing that always surprised me about One Direction was I had assumed that they were a group of friends, but they weren't. They no. were Simon Cowell looked at all their auditions for X Factor or whatever and was like, you guys yeah. aren't good enough by yourselves. Come together as one collective. Mm -hmm. So they, they were made. They were mm -hmm. created. Mm-hmm. So I just want to say off the record, I've never been into boy bands or like boy pop star groups or whatever same as you mm -hmm. i was 2012 was probably the beginning of one direction fame and i was already graduating high school and entering college at that point mm -hmm. so i actually had a few friends in college who were really into one direction so i was like uh-huh okay but i really didn't get it <laughs> so i just kind of let it go yes the topic of this week's episode because tease hasn't said it is baby oh, gate. my bad it's baby gate I don't know yeah. what that means. I don't know anything about this episode, but for months now, you've been like, can we do an episode on Babygate? Can we put Babygate on the poll? Maybe people will vote for Babygate. I'm like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. So now we're doing an episode on Babygate, and I'm we're really genuinely excited about it. We're going to learn. But, shocker, as I, I just want to tell you a fun fact about Tease. You want to hear some Tease lore really quick? Are you Niall Horan? No, but when I was a child, I made a pact with myself that I could only listen to bands that had at least one girl in it, so... That is the most you fact <laughs> I have ever heard. So I never was into, like, NSYNC or Backstreet Boys or, like, 98 Degrees when I was a kid because there were no girls. So I was really into 18s and I was really into Spice Girls and Bewitched, but no. No boys. So, when did anyway. you? When did you learn you were a lesbian? <laughs> <laughs> well, too late. I'm I'm sure. <laughs> a boy had to try to kiss me for that to happen, but there were questioning experiences maybe since I was eleven. <laughs> anyway, so. For people who do know what Babygate is, I was also subjected to it on Tumblr, and I also had to learn how to properly pronounce the name Louie. <laughs> you were like, I'm not sure like, if it's Louis or Louie. And I'm like, I wasn't! I, think it's I wasn't! I think it's Louie. So anyway, the story begins in 2015, where this random person, this would not mean anything to anybody if it wasn't for the situation type deal, this random person, Brianna Jungsworth, Jungworth, makes a Twitter account. Who gives a shit, you know? At the time, Brianna is unknown, but she does work in the fashion industry. She does, specifically, she works on photo shoots and stuff like that. So I guess it makes sense for her to have a social media account because you do work in the fashion industry. So you probably make friends with other clients, make friends with other people who work behind the scenes, stuff like that. So this was definitely that... in the era of time where it was like, not everybody had a Twitter. And if you had a Twitter, it was like, why do people need to know who you are, where you're going, what you're thinking? Just get exactly. a Tumblr. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So Brianna gets a Twitter. Big shocker. However, two days later, she's actually photographed with Louis Tomlinson of One Direction fame at a club. And fast forward a month later, in Jul on July 14th, 2015, Brianna announces that she's pregnant with Louis's child. However, this was before the 12th week safe mark at the end of the first trimester that most people usually wait to announce a pregnancy with. Mm -hmm. So this right here is the beginning of One Direction fans being very skeptical that this woman is actually pregnant. Okay. Because first of all, who the hell is she? Nobody's ever heard of her before he, she's photographed with Louis. She's virtually a nobody. Like she's not another celebrity or anything like that. 
And, and celebrities can only date other celebrities. Exactly. Celebrities can only have sex with other celebrities. Exactly. Louis Tomlinson can only have sex with Harry Styles. There is a invisible condom around <laughs> Louis's penis. And if you are not at least a C-list celebrity, <laughs> the condom will not go away. <laughs> anyway. <sighs> Immediately, obviously, One Direction fans are skeptical, especially fans who ship Louis Tomlinson and Harry Styles. In a ship known as... Oh, what is Larry it? It's Stileson. Larry. Yeah, Larry Stileson. Larry Stileson. That sounds like a Teen Wolf character name, honestly. It really does. It does. So it's important to also note at this time that exactly one month, one month before... Brianna's announcement announcement at a concert, Louis is seen throwing a baby doll off of a stage saying it's not real. And then he tosses us off the stage and says it is not real again. And because he happens to just randomly do this, <laughs> baby gate is born. <laughs> and you've got Charlie Day in the mail room at his board. All he wants is to talk about Pepe Sylvia. You are. <laughs> You're reenacting this. It's Baby Gate. I've been waiting to talk about Baby Gate. I've been dying to talk about Baby Gate. Can we talk about about Baby Gate? (laughs) It got so much worse. So, Baby Gate at his heart is obviously a conspiracy theory. Some people kind of believe that neither person is the parent of said baby. Some people believe that this is a cover-up for... One Direction gay relationships. Some people believe that the baby just straight up isn't real. So the term baby gate is the umbrella term for this whole bullshit barrage. And for this episode, we're mostly going to focus on the baby not being real. Because this is where most of the fandom pandemonium kind of took place. And the most absolute buck wild bullshit that happens within this like at one point a paparazzi asks louis how do you feel about people thinking your baby is fake and he has to say like give some respect to the kid like who says that to a new parent that's so fucked up to me and it feels so awful but anyway wait, wait, on out, my wait f- hold on <laughs> yeah did yeah. he actually have a baby does he yes, have a ch- <laughs> this baby is real <laughs> People didn't think it was real for like the first six months that it was born. <laughs> and he, okay, so he actually had a baby with Brianna Jungworth. Yes, yes, you can go on her Instagram and see pictures of him as a six year old right now. Oh my god. I know. So from here on out, my main source is going to be Ellie Woodward's BuzzFeed UK piece on all of the evidence for the conspiracy theory. Uh, she wrote it in the height of the baby gate. I don't even know what you want fiasco? to call it. Fiasco? Fiasco, yeah. I was going to say epidemic. The fiasco. <laughs> and it's really neatly put together for normies who are not One Direction fans like you and me. So if you do want to look up the pictures while we talk about this, if you want to read the article yourself, highly recommend I'll have a link to it in the show notes below. Thank you. Ellie Woodward's BuzzFeed UK piece. You could literally just Google baby gate BuzzFeed and it'll just pop up right away. The Verge also did a really good piece on it too, but didn't show as much of like the evidence. So the next piece of the puzzle, now that we know about Brianna's Twitter account, is that Anne-Marie Sampson, the head of Psycho PR, who takes care of like a lot of One Direction's bullshit, had twins in November 2015. Okay. Appropriately enough, Louis is also in LA at the time that these twins are born. Fans note this because the length of Louis's hair is at a certain length at the time also as when he took photos with his newborn son, Freddie. And Freddie is born in January. So this conspiracy had fans literally staring at Louis's hair and being like, this was taken earlier. 
his hair shouldn't be this long after uh, November, December, January, two months. So it's exactly like when people look at pictures of Kylie Jenner and they're like, wow, she has the same nail color here that she did six months ago in this photo. These were yes. clearly taken on the same day. And it's like, or yes. she got her nails painted the same color again. Yes. It's also yes. a plausible idea. Yes, exactly. And therefore, people assume that Freddie, Louis' son, either A, has a stand-in, which is Anne Marie's, one of Anne Marie's twins, or he's just posing with a baby so he can continue to keep up the ruse that he is not gay and not in love with Harry. So I don't know about you, but like my hair grows at least half an inch within a month because I shave my head once every four weeks. So I know how long my hair gets. And I know especially men's hair tends to usually grow longer than women's does, like quicker than Mm -hmm. women's does, if I recall correctly. So like this isn't shocking that he could have gotten a haircut or his hair has grown out in two months or whatever. There's also the fact that like, Okay, listen, we're, we're not going to entertain all of the, the Larry bullshit. Oh, d- oh, d- we are. Oh, no. <laughs> we are. But there's an aspect to it where it's like, you can be a gay man in a gay relationship and still have a child with yes. a woman. I don't... Yes. Oh, the layers. Uh, okay. Uh, 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 uh. Like I mentioned earlier, Freddie was born on January 21st, 2016. Okay. And... Louis posts on January 23rd that his son was born the night before. So which means that Louis would have assumed he was born on January 22nd. He unfortunately didn't get his own son's birthday right because Brianna posts the date of January 21st. And in this announcement tweet, Louis doesn't put a space between exclamation points. So fans were like, this is a fake tweet. This is fake. This is a PR stunt. Ah, uh, yes. His signature space between exclamation points. Yeah. It's yeah. definitely and- not like he and his partner have just been through something incredibly, let's be honest, traumatizing and harrowing. And he's maybe exhausted, as she is. I know. I know. And, like, not to mention on the date situation, I don't know if Louis was, like, actually there in mm-hmm. the... I was about to say the hotel room, the hospital room where she gave birth. Like she gave it birth in a hotel bathroom. Queen, we love to see it. <laughs> she didn't. For all I know, he could have been in the UK, and Brianna could have still been in the United States because Brianna it lives in California, mm-hmm. and I don't know where the fuck Louis lives, but he's clearly not American, so I'm gonna assume he's not in America. So it's like it happens, dude. Like also, I don't think it's really that deep. Yeah. Like you're so swept up in the emotion for all we know he couldn't have just had he could have had shitty wi-fi and then Mm -hmm. the tweet could have like sent out later when he got home or some shit like i don't know but people were like taking that as a legit like sign that he's lying or that this was a fake and i this blows my mind because also people were like but brianna's friend posted a picture of her excited in the waiting room but this is the same photo of some other lifestyle blogger. And I'm like, first of all, how do we know that the person is this person's friend? Second of all, how do we know that this is actually a picture of her? Third of all, also, they have different nail polish colors. <laughs> so it's not the same photo, babes. <laughs> <laughs> also, like... Big shocker, two lifestyle influencers looking similar to each other who are around the same age, both have their nose pierced pierced, and also are blonde. Why are you even, like, trying to compare the two, you know? Like, they both have clearly lashes. They both have makeup done. Like, they look pretty similar on the regular basis. And when you're pregnant and you're in a hospital gown that looks the same as every other mm-hmm. pregnancy ward hospital gown, I just... I, I have no, I have no stamina for this Well, that's bullshit. the thing, right, is, is yeah. that coincidences like this happen all the time. Yes, but we, yeah. But we suddenly assume that celebrities and the people in their lives are exempt from mundanity. And it's mm-hmm. like, that's, that's just not how it works. Yeah. <laughs> they yeah, are human yeah. beings. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. regular shitty things happen to them, too. And they look like other people. I just... Yes. I know. I know. And, like, for instance, Brianna also gets compared to YouTuber Roxaterra that 
also recently had a child Mm -hmm. and a lot of I'm going to say Larry fans in this situation because it's not even all One Direction fans. It was mostly Larry fans in this situation. Mm -hmm. And Larry, I mean, obviously, Louie and Harry. Mm -hmm. Uh, Her baby is dressed similarly in a photo that she posts on Instagram. And Freddie is also in a dark colored onesie. And I'm like, dude, how many places are there to even buy clothing for your newborn infant son? Mm -hmm. I'm going to assume that especially a dark blue for a baby onesie because people are obsessed with gender roles. One of the other comparisons with this photo is that Brianna's eyes look darker in the first time she's photographed by the sun versus her Instagram photo with her son where her eyes are blue. And I'm just like, how are you older than 14 and not realize that light affects light colored eyes well so so part of this then is that people also believe brianna is made up and not real yes yes a lot of people are like she's a stand-in she's a fake she's some sort of model that they're hiring frequently to fake this story no pr firm is gonna pay that much (laughs) thank you also like she was posting pictures of like her pregnant stomach and people were like well this is fake and i'm like uh, babes, I don't know what you mean by this is fake, but this woman's clearly pregnant. Like, whether she's ha- whether it's Louis's kid or not, like, she's still pregnant. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I just, somebody else, like, went even on to say that Freddie looks like one of the twins that Anne Marie Sampson gave birth to, but, like, dude, babies all look the same. <laughs> I, I don't know if you've ever seen a newborn baby, but... They look exactly the same they to one another. They all wrinkled and shriveled. And, yeah. and sometimes their nosey's a little bit bigger. Mm-hmm. I mean, sometimes their skin tone's obviously lighter or darker. But for the most part, all babies look the same to me. I, I don't know. If you're know. trying to build a conspiracy, right, the yeah. similarity of newborns is going to play into that, however. Yeah, exactly. And, like, one of the other pieces of evidence that was actually, like, totally bogus that was like set that this was like set up and staged or whatever was because when Brianna got out of the hospital she stands she's seen standing putting the baby in the car instead of being wheelchair directly to the car and put into the car like that's usually done in most hospitals Mm -hmm. and in the background of these paparazzi photos you can also see that there's a sign that says private property in the background and the skeptics around this baby gate situation tried to basically be like well this has to be staged this is a staged paparazzi photo and dude i don't know about you but like if i was pregnant and i was some rando and i was pregnant by a celebrity i would go to a private clinic yeah like (laughs) there are other ways to have a baby besides in just a hospital exactly and I, i it's everybody's right to do what's comfortable to them and if brianna wanted to go to a either a private hospital that was smaller so there'd be less chance of a paparazzi getting in or if she wanted to go specifically to like a dola clinic or a natural birth situation Mm -hmm. she has the right and opportunity to and the fact that people were like well this is staged because she's standing girl can get out of her car and put the car seat into the car Mm -hmm. herself if she so wanted to so (sighs) and then to make it even worse skeptics actually went to like the county clerk's office and got the public record to analyze the baby's birth certificate yikes and would you like to read what some random person typed up on tumblr about this oh sure yes these are not the legal documents signed by the parents i refer you to trump versus the state of hawaii This is a form printed by the county clerk's office to confirm that a birth was registered under those names. They are simply a record of the name given to the child and the biological parents as reported upon admission to hospital. Frequently, adopting couples will have their name recorded on this certificate if allowed by law. I would also point out that these documents have been used by child abductors to fake credentials, fraudsters to commit identity theft, and are very easily forged. If you are Catholic, you can get an equally valid baptismal certificate, which serves the exact same purpose, to confirm that someone with that name is believed to exist. This was a post written by Masquerade HFX on Tumblr. How do you feel? 
doing, Cass? I'm really... Angry is not the right word. Mm -hmm. I am... I'm continually frustrated by, first of all, the culture and and establishment of celebrity because it is inherently abusive. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it is for reasons like this. People begin to feel very entitled to the very private affairs of somebody's life. This is literally a newborn child who is ostensibly already being harassed. They are being Mm -hmm. harassed from the moment they are born into this world. It's like... Like, when Blue Ivy was, like, getting sent death threats at age four. Like, how can you even in good faith do this to a child, let alone an infant? Because it's not about the baby for these people. It is about this weird sense of of ownership over a celebrity's life. In this case, Mm -hmm. Louis Tomlinson, right? Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. If you think even, like, this sort of thing is appropriate, again, examine your behavior, examine your closeness to something, and step the fuck back. This is so yeah. wildly inappropriate and yeah. disgusting. And mm-hmm. I get that it's fun on some level for people in a way that I don't totally understand to the complete extent of it. But, like, mm-hmm. like you're saying, so much of this is motivated by the fact that people are deeply obsessed with this ship. That's not real. That we also apparently, to my understanding, like destroyed the friendship between Harry Styles and Louis yes. Tomlinson. Yes. Because yes. they were so uncomfortable being around each other because people immediately took it and ran with it for things like this. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. not even recognizing the portion of yeah. this situation, which is that Brianna's a mother who has just given birth. She is incredibly mm-hmm. vulnerable. And she has to worry about all of this shit in the background of her mind because you know paparazzi are spewing this kind of thing at her because you know their job is to sift and comb through this kind of mm-hmm. stuff and, yeah. and help incense this level of yeah bullshit. <laughs> mm-hmm. And like, I remember when this first came out, I was like, this is so ridiculous that it's funny. Mm-hmm. But now that it's been a little bit while and I'm more removed from it. I'm just like, how can you do this to just two people who want to live their life? And I don't know if I, truth be told, I actually don't know if Louis is like really a present father or not. I looked through Instagram and for the most I found that Louis's Instagram is really kind of sanitized and it's mostly like tour dates and tour videos Mm -hmm. and, all of this kind of stuff, and very little of it is like personal stuff. And which the is last understandable. Time, yeah. Would and you want to share a post- crumb of your personal life? Is if this Not is the kind like of scrutiny this. it's subjected to? Yeah. And the most recent photo he posts of Freddie on his Instagram is July 2017, from what I saw. Mm-hmm. But also, it looks like both Freddie and Brianna are chronic Instagram post leaders, mm-hmm. especially Brianna. So. Uh, I really don't know. I don't know if he's really, like, a present father. I don't know if he has, like, joint custody. I really don't know Because anything. that's none of our like business, I, frankly. Exactly. Yeah. And I don't really want to know either because it's... I, who gives a shit how this, you know? Um, so, are you ready for this shit to get worse? No. <laughs> so, obviously, once Freddie gets home, photos got posted you know Mm -hmm. as one does when they like to share photos of their babies there's a really good photo of me for my first birthday where i have a little baby mohawk and my mom traded photography photos for a pair of drapes my mom sewed somebody drapes and then they took professional photos so are we gonna are we gonna put those on the on the twitter i mean if you want to i could find they're your baby photos I, I mean, it's like a classic tease photo, so I could. I could okay. send it to you. If, maybe I'll send it to you just for you to see. But now we're going to get to photos of Louie and Freddie. And at this point, Larry fans are so desperate to debunk that this baby is real that they went such great lengths to prove that these photos are fake and photoshopped that, like, even I... I'm like, this, this is bullshit. <laughs> like, this seems absolutely bullshit. Like, I, just your logical brain, your, your rabid fangirl RPF, obsessive, I don't even know what to call it, brain, is just totally kicking out logic brain so horribly at this point mm-hmm. that I'm uncomfortable, you yeah. know? 
So the first Stop photo. reading the Daily Mail. Put it down. Yeah. Unplug yeah. for a little bit. Hey, mm-hmm. hey, I'm your dad right now. Let's unplug. Let, let's unplug hey, for a little bit. Let's, let's go outside. Let's go, uh, let's go throw a ball around outside. Let's go take a walk and uh, grow some Pikmin. Yeah, exactly. Let's let's, let's Pokemon go to the polls. <laughs> <laughs> so the first post I'm in that... Cedar Rapids. <sighs> Chilling. <laughs> <laughs> the first photo that Lewis... Ah! The first photo that Louis posts with Freddy is black and white, and Louis is shirtless, and baby Freddy is resting on his chest. Seems totally normal, right? Like, that mm-hmm. sounds really touching, like a papa and his son. I know, like, skin to skin contact is really important for an infant. Mm-hmm. Like, all of this stuff is well known. But to Larry fans, they're like, no, something is wrong. This photo is in black and white. Louie never posts anything in black and white. Girl help. <laughs> Girl help. And I, it's an emotional photo. Let it be in black and white. So because of these suspicions, fans started to go check the color levels of the original photo. And because of the photo manipulation and the like color balancing and stuff like that, Fans were convinced that Freddy isn't touching Louie's chest and that this photo has to be photoshopped and staged and fake. And fans proceeded to find like other pictures of Louie and claim that his face was like superimposed or shopped on top of them in that image. And like even some believe that the whole picture was totally fake because there's like some ugly ass half a heart tattoo that Louis has and it's not in the original picture I couldn't see the half a heart tattoo in the image even until like let me guess the person with the other half of the heart is Harry it sure is it sure is Cass it sure is oh my god of course it is because ah, meanwhile ah, it's just like the natural curvature of like his deltoid coming into his bicep or something that people are like look it's a faded removed tattoo well it's not even removed I think it's just a really shitty done stick and poke that both of them have oh my god yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I'm. Oh my God, One Direction fans, if you are listening to this, I am so sorry, but I don't care. I don't want you to correct me. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> anyway, Tease, Tease looks perhaps the most bereft I have ever seen them. What's What's worse, this or when I did Final Fantasy House? Final Fantasy House had some level okay listen listen (laughs) final fantasy house i can understand its irrationality because so much of it is tied into mental illness and cult tactics this is this is like sort of the dregs of fandom of where people get really entitled and like i would kind of fandom history and okay the part of this that drives me nuts too is that this sort of stuff is the ideal almost for a publicist of them because they're being talked about people are hyper fixated on their lives they want to know every little piece of them which is why i would encourage people to go back and look at our rpf episode which is real person fiction and learn about how media conglomerates and labels have always used this sort of thing to stoke this kind of fan Mm -hmm. behavior and Mm -hmm. this is sort of the natural boiling point of it where people become very entitled to the private details of somebody's life and when those don't match up with their perception they get very upset and they try to change very real evidence in front of them Mm -hmm. to match their delusion one of the fan theories for this i didn't go into fan theories Mm -hmm. i just kind of wanted to give the blow by blow that this baby was fake mostly since Mm -hmm. this was like the big thing that kind of gripped all of tumblr when it happened was that this was done to boost up Louis Louis's popularity Mm -hmm. because if you look at One Direction as a whole obviously Harry Styles and Zayn Malik are like the two most popular members of the group Mm -hmm. and as I think fan lore put it somebody on Tumblr was like well Harry's let's say a B-level celebrity Mm -hmm. but Louis is a Mm D-level we need to boost up 
Louis's level. So then when they finally come out in their relationship, they'll be on even terms. And yeah. So anyway. Yeah, we can't tell the world about yeah. our secret gay relationship. Not because it's difficult or, you know, people are weirdly covetous or the fact that it's not happening, but because Perhaps there's a power we announcing balance. our relationship. Huh? I said, when are we announcing our relationship? To the I love you, but I'm not dating you. No, I know. <laughs> I, I think you would kill me if you were. Cass is nodding. I'm a luxury that few can afford. <laughs> I'm an Aries, and that's a lot for some people. That's a I'm lot a Virgo, for most so I think it would be. <laughs> we are ten. Jenna and Julian. Wow. <laughs> Wow. We're gonna move we in together, and people are gonna we think are, that we're just gonna be hiding our relationship. When meanwhile we're like of, at each other's throats every time we record. Yeah. Instead of little greyhounds, we just have our two little black cats. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so second photo is released of Louis and Baby. And do you remember how I was talking about his haircut <laughs> in oh, the no. beginning? This is the haircut photo, and fans were like, "This doesn't make sense. Why is his hair shorter in the, the last?" photo than it is now yeah he definitely and doesn't why? have a stylist who like keeps on top of his look and makes sure it's like thank consistent you. thank you and because of the hair length people really thought that it was Anne marie samson's samson's baby and this isn't really freddie and this bothers me so much because when you are at this level of celebrity every single photo of you is not just taken in your kitchen it is a well-crafted well-shot photo he's probably getting these photos done professionally by either a a like family life photographer that mm-hmm. spe- like specializes in something like this especially like newborns because i know newborns can be difficult and cranky and stuff like that or somebody who hosts who does photography for like family circle or like another baby magazine or like the knot or the whatever the fuck the family it's funny version how of the people knot who get is this into celebrity seem to just like completely erase all of the very basic yes. things about celebrity yes. and how groomed yes. and manicured it is yes and there's also another tattoo controversy oh, no. with this photo because louis chest tattoo is missing he has some ugly ass 78 tattooed on his chest underneath some ugly ass cursive that i can't read and the <laughs> Jeez, photo not a single tattoo <laughs> tattoo critic <laughs> i am <laughs> i've watched every season of ink master thank you very i have not <laughs> but <laughs> I love you too. I know. <laughs> Cast voice. Tish, just get a tattoo. It's not that scary. Me. But it hurts and it's loud <laughs> and it's scary. <laughs> Tease, I will not walk on the same block as a tattoo shop. Am afraid. <laughs> but valid. <laughs> Thank you. It's scary. I would, but scary. And I'm also really. How long were you afraid of Hot Topic? Movies. Until I was 15. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, like, still afraid to talk to people who seem too cool for me, by the way. <laughs> like, there's a few people that I'm friends with that I'm like, oh, I'm afraid of you. And, like, but I'm, like, really good friends with them. And then, like, finally, after, like, knowing them for six months, I'm, like, normal. But I get really afraid of people really You need easily. them to, like, fart or burp around you, and then you're like, oh, Thank okay. You. Or for yeah, them to talk about Yeah, just be with the door poop. open once, and I'll be fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. So... His chest tattoo is missing. There's also a dagger tattoo that's missing on his arm. And he has uh, 28 tattooed on two of his fingers. And that was also missing from the photo. And all things that are genuinely easily photoshopped out. Yeah, which like, okay, yeah, exactly. Like, it's really suspicious that they're not there. But also because it is done by a professional Probably there was just some weird touch-up stuff that happened, yeah. you know? Like, God knows, uh, like, an arm could have been shopped to slightly be moved differently to yeah. handle the baby better. Like, the same exact shit with the first one that we're like, oh, this looks different. Oh, this is this. How do you screw this up? Dude, look, how many photos did you probably manipulate of this guy to get the perfect shot for his Instagram? Yeah. Like, <clears throat> like you, you think all these are candid? These are not just candid. Mm-hmm. Like, not for an infant newborn for a member of one direction just mm-hmm. 
<laughs> no. Anyway, fans also claimed that several of these photos are actually edits of the actor Horatio Panchetti and his son, who has a uncanny resemblance Horatio does, not the baby, <laughs> to <laughs> Tomlinson. And once again, fans were playing with levels and uh, his hair is shopped or his head is shopped or around his tattoos are shopped. No shit. Sometimes photos also look photoshopped in their raw state because yes. sometimes lighting setups are weird mm -hmm. and nature is weird. Like there mm -hmm. is this whole premise in art, right, of just what is anatomically or physically correct is not necessarily aesthetically appealing and vice versa. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And I mean, a lot of people's biggest complaints are like the hair and the tattoos with mm -hmm. these photos. But like, I, n I don't know if you like have any insight on this. And I'm just speculating here. But I feel like when a celebrity has a child, it seems that like, everything that defines them needs to be exaggerated and touched up to some degree. So they're more recognizable. Mm -hmm. And for instance, like, I feel like his tattoos needed to be readable in a way that if you're scrolling down Instagram and you're like, oh, was that Louis Tomlinson with his baby? Mm -hmm. You're going to stop to look at the photo to like it. And because, A, you're not paying, so you're not like super paying attention, but you know his tattoos. So that's why he's shirtless and all of them. So mm -hmm. I feel like you would stop and be like, oh, it's Louis and his baby. Let me look at it because I heard about this baby. So I feel like his tattoos would be either more defined or sharpened to some degree to just look and he's always looking down at his son mm -hmm. because you want to focus on the baby yeah but the eye catch is knowing that it's louis and it's his tattoos and you mm -hmm. could recognize him by his tattoos so i really feel like these probably were shopped just not for the reasons that fans thought it was shopped mm -hmm. well, and the thing is right you would you would actually probably want to remove his tattoos from the photos unless he's like adam levine and totally completely covered because mm -hmm. you want the he focus to be on the baby you yeah and, he, and anytime you have text or a high contrast area that's immediately where the eye is going to go and so compositionally his tattoos probably messed with the focal point of the baby which is probably why they were removed it also could have just been his partner or him being like and eh, get my tattoos out of here i don't want them in yeah. this photo yeah, he has a lot of tattoos, and he has a lot of... He has a lot of, like, little tattoos, doesn't he? He has a lot of little tattoos. Yeah, yeah that's a really good way to put it. He has a lot of, like... He has a lot of gap fillers. Yeah. <laughs> like, here's here's one of the photos actually in question. I'm just sending it to you so you can get an idea. Mm -hmm. uh, this is actually the one that we were talking about, because you could see, technically, like, where his finger is, where he's... Oh, this is a really small photo. No, where he's fine. touching Freddy, in between the fingers, you should technically be able to see the 78. They and were like, absolutely removed for clarity and focus on the yes! baby. Yes! Thank you! Because all yes! the tattoos that are kept work the composition to make your eye flow toward the baby. Thank you! See, guys, you just gotta have a friend who is really good with tattoos and does art for a living, and then you will never think a baby is fake again <laughs> so the final big scoop that freddie is a fake baby and isn't real is that his hands and feet look the same in every single picture posted of him within the first two months babies don't have fine eyes... motor skills i know and his eyes aren't open like bro do you know how much infants sleep <laughs> you know when the best time to get a picture of a baby is when they're when asleep they're and chilling <laughs> <laughs> his so for i will say this is a little bizarre because his fingers are kind of like clawed together mm -hmm. like they're kind of like Neh. but also like babies just do that shit all yeah. the time like babies love to like crinkle their hands together they and don't like, have let fine their toes motor flex. skills much less gross yeah. motor skills Yes. Listen, you got to get your four-year-old a Transformers doll for them to be able to wiggle their don't, fingers no, easily. No, don't get your child a Transformers toy. That's too. Those are like ages six. That's and for. Up. Yes, thank you. I know. Get I was your child some Weeble Wobbles. Yeah, or like a Duplo or something. Yes, Duplos first. Duplos before Duplos. Legos. Duplos are great. I love Duplos. I had Duplos as a kid. I also had fun. Duplos as a kid. Wow. I also like Playmobiles too. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so a lot of people were like, his fingers look the same. Why are his toes splayed? They look like this Google image search of a fake baby toy's feet. And I'm like, dude, the reason why a, ba a fake baby 
is made like that is because actual baby toes look like that. Like, I, I, chicken or the egg, babes? It's clearly the chicken <laughs> in this situation. Like, I, <laughs> I just, this makes me so mad. And people were also then, like, looking up, like, those high, highly realistic synthetic babies mm-hmm. that, like, you can put makeup on and they look like they're real babies and stuff like that. You know, for and, film shoots, I'll, like American yeah. Sniper didn't use. <laughs> <laughs> never forget and like all of these photos are black and white so obviously it's fake because that makes the baby look more realistic because there's not as many colors and i'm just like you need to give this up like you it it's over it's you're constructing it's and building a delusion around you and because you've done that you refuse to see any sort of rationale behind it and you yep. won't come out of it it's just no yep. yeah so that's basically like the main components it's a lot of Photoshop shit, a lot of this baby looks similar, a lot of like, well, Harry's looking down in this photo from 2014, and why does it look like it's exactly the same photo here, and it's 2016, and I'm like, dude, it's the same guy, he has the same facial features as he did two years ago, it's the same because it's the same person. It it's could have like, been the same photographer, it could have been from the same photo shoot, but that doesn't invalidate the existence yes. of a baby to purport your Thank shit. you. <laughs> And it's, like, so frustrating because this baby is clearly real. And if you, like I said, if you go on Brianna's Instagram, he's there. He's vibing. Which, by the way, Brianna no longer has a Twitter. It's just strictly her Instagram. And you know what? Good for her. She's living her life. She's taking photos in her bikini. She's posting photos on the beach. There's a really cute picture of Freddie hanging out in front of a tree. And it's so weird because there's so many people who then comment on Brianna's photos like oh my god I'm so sorry in 2015 I really thought this baby was fake and I'm like you guys really want to make this woman relive this six years later it's just so disrespectful and because that's an absolution of their own guilt that's not for Mm -hmm. her that's 100% for them yeah and I mean that's it this baby's real and there's nothing you can do about it and like I said like The fact that paparazzi even got in on this and people like me were just reading it on Tumblr, like, oh, my God, this baby might be fake. Even though I knew the baby was real, to just retroactively look back on it, it's so disheartening that we can let fandom culture get to this level. Parasocial relationships are bad parasocial fixations are bad you are not entitled to the private details of anyone's life not even a celebrity's because i think so many people are like well they're a celebrity so they need to get used to it or they signed up for this no that doesn't make it okay they're they're not consenting to you digging through you know court documents you know looking at all of the photos that they they share of their private life for you to pick apart and dismantle and accuse of being faked or staged because you would rather believe in a fictitious relationship between two very real people whose relationship is affected by your constant clamoring on the internet. Nasty. Bad. This is a bad part of fandom. Mm -hmm. I mean, One Direction fans have also tried to, like, crawl into Liam's window when he was in a hotel room, if I recall correctly. I'm sure. Too. And I understand that that's not representative of every single fan. And like no, this this section isn't so. representative of the fandom at no. large. But it's worth pointing out like this incredibly gross and inappropriate behavior that mm-hmm. frankly is really easy, especially I think for young people to get swept up in because they, they want to yep. feel part of the moment. They want to feel like yep. they're understanding something bigger than themselves, mm-hmm. even if that idea of something bigger than themselves is a baby controversy. Yeah. So here we go. One direction. That baby is real. Freddie Rain. I I don't know if he goes by Tomlinson, but Freddie Rain's real, baby. I don't know what to tell you. He's real. It's a and very for the real people, baby and a very real child. Yeah, and I mean obviously this did eventually like fizzle out, I think, maybe after like six months. But also I don't really follow One Direction fans, so I, I don't know how long this conspiracy really went on, but Just the thought that this was supposedly a cover-up for a group's relationship. And honestly, like, why would it even be a cover-up? Because I feel like if two of them were to be dating and they were to come out, how much publicity would that get? How much more opportunities would that be for the group? Like, it just seems to me that 
it's a no-brainer that if they were in a relationship and they did want to go public, they would, and it would be such a money maker. Unfortunately, mm. like I don't want anybody's relationship to be a money maker, but I feel like I don't know that I agree with that because I okay, think okay, that's fair. I think at that point in time, you would have had a huge homophobic outcry. And the mm. appeal of boy bands, let's be honest, mm-hmm. is often to market them as, like, these sort of yeah. proxy stand-ins for people's boyfriend fantasy. Mm-hmm. Which is why yes. all of One Direction's songs are these, you know, songs yes. to the listener about mm-hmm. their beauty, their confidence, how much they love mm-hmm. them. Because they're there as a stand-in for people to that project upon. Yeah, no, that's fair. I, I, can, I can accept that, I but think. But a further reason why, like, that sort of of marketing is really disgusting and disturbing and you have it with k-pop idols as well where it's like Mm -hmm. especially the women are not allowed to even disclose that they're in a relationship or dating they Mm -hmm. can't mention any of that because it ruins the fantasy for fans and their numbers will you know absolutely dive into the it's a mess it's a whole mess it's it's really disturbing (sighs) baby gate baby gate thanks for coming on this journey with me thank you for taking me on this journey do you hate me a little bit more for this? Absolutely not. I don't hate you at all. I love this. Thank you. I'm glad. I don't hate you. You would have to work so hard to get me to hate you. <laughs> me farts on your pillow. There it is. Nika farted on top of my head once. So, and I don't hate Nika even a little bit. So, again, you have to work really hard to get me to hate you. I'm really glad. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to know what we're talking about next week? Sure. Next week, we're talking about monster fucking and especially about Yay. Pyramid Head and the reclamation of these horror icons for yeah. people's sexual fantasies and why that appeals to people. I'm really excited to talk about it. I'm so glad because Saturday is grandma's birthday and then Sunday, we I just about, get to hear about that. On Saturday, you get cake and on Sunday, you get cake. It's just a different kind of cake. It's Pyramid Head Exactly. <laughs> Happy birthday, Grandma. Here's some Pyramid Head facts. You know what? Your grandma's into Ash Nico. I think she'd be into Pyramid Head's fat fucking ass. Grandma does love Ash Nico. It's so funny. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, If you got to the end of the episode, thank you so much for sticking around. I know this one, we get a little bit hot and spicy, but sometimes fandom does nasty things. We uh, we plan to record the next uh, patron bonus episode next week, so we'll hit you with that soon. If you're interested in supporting us, you can check us out on Patreon. We have a tip jar, and then we also have a $5 tier where you get access to a whole bunch of bonus episodes that are increasing every month in number. But you also get access to polls, and, you know, sometimes we test the waters about topics over there. So, What's our most recent... Um... We talk about frogs and yes. um, I share some really cool fun facts about frogs because I really like them and Tease talks about how much they love Watership Down. Yeah, but uh, what's uh, our most, our closest goal right now? $100, right? I think so. 150 Yeah. I think so. It's and okay. at that point, it, it jumps up from being at least one bonus episode a month to two bonus episodes a month, I think, maybe. At $500 a month. Tease will break down Homestuck beat by beat, point by point for me. That's a goal I really yeah. want to get to someday. Maybe That'd next year. Maybe, maybe next year. <laughs> maybe by the end of next year. <laughs> maybe. But if you're not interested in that, obviously, just listening to the show really helps us out, you know, sticking around, listening to the episodes. We really appreciate all of you guys. I know we're going into, like, travel season, so maybe, maybe pop on the podcast while you're driving with friends to a fun little event. You can also leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. That really helps us out. Uh, yeah, all of that. You can find more information about us and where you can find us across social media at our website. That's authorsnotepod.com. My name is Cass, and you can find me pretty much everywhere on the internet at Val Hethella. That's V-A-L-H-E-T-H-E-L-L-A. T's where can people get more of you at? You can find me at Vicuña. That's V-I-C-U-N-A-D. You can also find me on the Fresh Podcast Market, a real podcast about fake podcasts. And you could find me writing on Fandom Spotlight, which is a fandom and nerd news outlet. If you liked our theme music, that was by James Wyulo, and you can find him on Bandcamp under James Y. And Cass, who did our cover art? Our cover art was done by the wonderful and incredible Nyaliest. You can find her on Twitter at Nyaliest, at N-Y-A-L-L-I-E-S-T. She got through Heavensward and Stormblood in, like, a weekend. 
and I'm still mm-hmm. frightened by that level of power. That means nothing to you, Tease, but it means everything to me. Uh, it does mean something. I, I know what those words mean. Do you? I do. What's Heaven's Word? Takes a... It's one of the Final Fantasy expansions. Which one, Tease? Isn't that the, like, most recent really big one? Nope, that's Shadowbringers. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, next week, monster fucking. Until yeah. next time, stay safe. Examine your closeness to media. Understand and respect the legitimacy of babies. And have a great week. Do something nice for yourself. Bye. Bye.